Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. How did the Democrats end up with Kamala Harris instead of President Joe Biden as their nominee? Over on MSNBC, Joy Reid actually admitted that the effort to oust Biden was a Pelosi coup. Does she have a point? Let's take a listen. The Pelosi coup succeeded when on Sunday afternoon, July 1st, 2024, Biden released a letter announcing he would no longer seek a second term. Less than half an hour after he announced his withdrawal, Biden exercised what in many ways is the greatest power any leader can, the power to choose your own successor. He bypassed the rumored wishes of the Pelosi and donor crew and fully endorsed his historic vice president, Kamala Harris, to be the Democratic nominee and the would-be first woman, first black woman, and first Asian American president. Yeah, so I found it funny her referring in this clip to an actual Pelosi coup. And I think she was maybe confusing, maybe I think she says coup de gras, and, but, which is like the finishing move. And what she meant was coup d'etat, which is, you know, when you steal power from someone else. Because there is a little bit, and right now it's mostly Republicans talking about it, of, a, of what happened to Joe Biden. And I don't have much affinity for Joe Biden or his policies. And I think the process to pick him in the first place to be the candidate again was not particularly democratic. It's not, he, it's not that he has this massive base of supporters necessarily who've been betrayed. All of that said, him not being the candidate is a result of the Democratic elites and the top level donors deciding to swap him out um, and forcing that choice on him. It, it, it's, it was not done democratically. Maybe no one's complaining about it because he didn't have support to begin with, but it's like the process was undemocratic and then the correction was also undemocratic. It was kind of a coup, it seems, organized by Pelosi and Barack Obama behind the scenes to say that we don't think he can win and so we're just, we're just deciding, like the smoke-filled rooms of yore, that it ought to be someone else at this late juncture. Yes, I think that every aspect of the primary process on the Democratic side has been massively disrespectful to their base of voters. Because even if you believe that, you know, Biden was the incumbent, so he had the right to sort of this sewn-up nomination process, they also engaged in a massive cover-up of Biden's cognitive decline that was laid bare during that first presidential debate. So you had a, a voter class that was not able to make an informed choice about who they wanted to and be they, the nominee. And they were worried even before that. They, if you polled actual the Democratic base, a majority said they had serious concerns right. that he was already too old and I believe, to run before they saw the footage. Right, and I believe it was two-thirds who said that they preferred yeah. to have a different candidate. Then you fast forward and the Democrats in the elite you know, official party apparatus are now saying that we have to swap him out for a different candidate um, but not because his health is so bad and this was a shock to all of us and this is a requirement to basically save this man from further humiliating himself or deteriorating on the world stage. It's only because the polling shows us that he can't win. So if that's your argument for why you need to swap in a new candidate, which has also been hand chosen by the Democratic elite, then you are admitting to, uh, to ignoring the will of the primary voters again and just doing whatever it is the yeah. handful of people at the top would like to do. And like, look, it's perfectly fine to have a system where just the people who run the party pick the, the nominee instead of uh, any, the Democratic, the, the, the voters that used to be how nominees were chosen in both parties throughout the course of like, you know, the 19th century where it was the smoke filled room saying that, oh, it would be great in this election if we had someone from, you know, Ohio and someone from South Carolina, you know, that's the compelling ticket. They comment they didn't run sometimes the incumbent president if they thought they had a stronger ticket and yeah it wasn't democratic at all it was based on the needs of the era in modern times we've done it where the people decide and it, on the republican side that often in as it has been the case with trump is infuriating to the elites who absolutely have wanted a different candidate but um they can't do it because on the Republican side, Trump does have a base that is so committed to him, and there would be a there would be blood in the streets if they did if the elites in the Republican Party did what the Democratic elites just did to Joe Biden. Uh, on the other side, Joe Biden doesn't have that level of base enthusiasm. Um, still, you know, if you were a if you were a Biden fan, and there are some of them out there, or, or, there are people who prefer him to the alternative at least. 
they got to feel a little bit like, huh, my party just decided, nope, the incumbent president can't be the guy anymore in a, in a very unprecedented fashion. It's a it's an exceptional circumstance because the debate happened and he is clearly in decline. And I don't think he could have made it through four more years. In fact, I don't really think he should be president right now if he's not going to make it through four years. Uh, we're kind of doing a little, he's not going to, he's just going to be you know, <laughs> occupying the chair right. for the next several weeks. Just a lame duck president. And it is fascinating to watch the Democrats walk this tightrope of explaining why it is exactly that Joe Biden can no longer be the nominee. Because again, just swapping someone out at the last minute because you don't think they can win is so blatantly anti-democratic yeah. and a slap in the face to your voters. But they can't say the real reason because if they said the real reason, then that gives ammo to their political opponents to say, it's time to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove Joe Biden because he can't be president right now. If he can't run for office and he can't serve another four terms, then he's incapable of doing the job right now. And this was further put on display this past week when he gets this case of COVID. We don't see him in public for six days. Yeah. And they, uh, they actually released the letter of yeah. him announcing that he was no longer running on his ex account on social media. And we didn't hear from him for several days after that. And when we did, it was in a phone call that frankly sounded recorded yeah, you know, at the campaign headquarters. I honestly don't blame him because they've humiliated him. And I think right. he's kind of like, you know what? Screw you guys then. I'm not going to lift a, f I'm not going to do anything. I think he's probably upset because this is crazy that this uh, happened to him. I, it, again, I, I do not care for the man's policies. I don't think he has been a great president, but this is, he's really been knifed in the back by a, a lot of the leadership of his party when he is actually the one, at least with the track record of actually winning. He did win election in 2020. The midterms uh, for the Democrats went better than expected for them under his leadership. So, you know, I understand his skepticism a little bit when they came to him and said, yeah, you can't win, so we're putting in someone else. Is Kamala Harris going to perform better against Donald Trump than Joe Biden would have? The polls right now seem to suggest that, and I absolutely think it's conceivable and possible that that's the case. I also think it's possible she does worse than he would have because he has been tested and he has been in politics and he has run a million elections and he's won a good number of them. She has not. She has not won on her own election outside of California. When she entered the primary process, it did not go well. She is much less tested than the Democratic Party seems to think. So I, they're taking more of a gamble than they realize. I know their view is that it was a gamble to leave Joe Biden in, and I understand why they reached that decision. But we'll see. We'll see how the American electorate, more broadly speaking, outside of San Francisco, feels about this figure that has been suddenly thrust upon them. Yeah, I was looking at some polls from just before the announcement was made where they compared Trump to, against Biden to Trump against Harris, and she performed worse. And so mm. I suspect that she's getting just a little bit of a post-announcement polling yeah. bump right now, and that's gonna dissipate pretty quickly. We will find out more free media right after this.